Okay, I'm back with part two of this ECU install. So just a quick recap on what I've done so far. I have removed the stock ECU from the car and installed the ME221 in its place. I've run the map line from the ECU to the inlet manifold of the engine. And most recently, I've installed the AEM AFR gauge and the wideband sensor. So in this episode, I need to hook the laptop up to the ECU, get a base map uploaded to it. And then after a quick sensor check and some calibrations, I'll be attempting a first startup which is pretty exciting so without further ado let's get this show on the road right okay I've got the ME221 connected up to the laptop via the tuning cable and the first thing I need to do is open up Mighty which is motorsport electronics tuning software so down here click this uh, that's loading up. Now when that loads up, I'm going to switch the ignition of the car on to power up the ECU and then hopefully this software will detect it and download the current map. So it's booted up now. I'm going to switch the ignition on. There we go. The software is detecting it and downloading the current map, which I believe is for a turbo 1.6 car. Right, let's have a look at this thing. So Okay, yeah, down on the displacement box here, I can see it's 1600, so it's a 1 1.6. And then over here to the right, I can see it was running big 525cc injectors. So there's a good chance this was for a turbo 1.6. And I click here over to the mapping tab, and I can see these tables are filled out with tuning data for that engine. Now, this all looks really nice, but unfortunately, this is no good for our naturally aspirated 1.8 engine. So I need to upload a base map. So up here to file, then load calibration file. And here I've got one I downloaded from the ME website. So I'm gonna click that and then click open. Now I'm gonna click upload all data because this is a completely fresh start. So click all and then down and click load calibration and click yes to that. So now, this map is getting overwritten by the 1.8 VVT base map. And as this is basically a stock engine, with the exception of a K and an air filter, this should be plenty good enough to get this engine up and running. So that's nearly done. Calibration loaded successfully. Okay, click that. Now I'm just gonna cycle the ignition off. And then back on again. Right, here we go, let's check this thing. So over here now on the engine displacement, I can see that it is set to 1.8, which is good. And the injector size has dropped to 256, which I, I imagine is the stock injector size. So let's click over here on the mapping tab and we can see that the tables have been replaced with fresh data, which is great. So let's do a quick sensor check while we're here. I can see the map sensor is reading 95 kilopascals, which is about right for ambient pressure. Battery voltage is 11.8, 11.7 volts, that looks good. Intake air temperature, three or four degrees Celsius, which seems about right, it's cold. And then the coolant temperature, a few degrees above that, because I've only started the car briefly this morning to pull it out of the garage. Now, there's a couple of sensors I do want to calibrate before I uh, try an initial startup. And the first one is over here on the sensor cals tab. Now, this is the throttle position sensor so this is down here on the bottom left and if I depress the throttle here we go you'll see the crosshairs moving up and down so it is calibrated but is it calibrated perfectly to this car I don't know so let's do that so up here to the ECU tab and down to throttle calibration now follow the instructions so close the throttle which it is click next open the throttle foot flat to the floor click next and there we go click finish and there we go that's calibrated now you can see how the graph has changed to reflect that there we go that's good okay the next thing is to calibrate the AEM AFR gauge so if you come here from that video this is what you'll be looking for so first up over here on the lambda tab I need to make sure we've got our wideband selected so we click the narrow band we want to change that to wideband and now I'm going to open up the HRT uh, table. So if I go down here to the left and click this HRT tab and in the drop down menu I'm going to select the wideband O2 HRT. Now this is the table we need to modify because right now you can see it's set to a very linear scale where 0 volts equals an AFR of 10 and 5 volts gives you an AFR reading of 20 and anything else in between there 
is calculated in a linear fashion. Now, there's a good chance this is going to be no good for your AFR gauge because depending on brand, they all have different output voltage scaling. And I can see right now that mine is incorrect because the reading I'm getting in the software here, you know, around 14.6 is not the same as what the gauge is showing. So I know this needs calibrating. So I'm running the AEM X series. So I've gone and downloaded the manual for this gauge from online and somewhere in here should be a table which shows me the output voltage scale. So if I scroll down a bit, there it is. Now that's what I need. I'm gonna input this data from this table into the ECU software. That'll just take me a couple of minutes and then you can join me back in Mighty. Right, okay, as you can see, that scale has been replicated in Mighty here. So now that AFR gauge should be calibrated as well and i can already tell that it is because the wideband reading that i'm getting in the software which is now 12.7 is exactly what is showing on the gauge so that's great now the next thing i need to do before i go any further is save this map so i don't have to go through any of this again so to do that i'm going to go up to file then save calibration file and then you can call it whatever you want i'm going to call it my name why not so James, I'm going to click save. Great, so that's saved. So if I ever need to revert back to this sort of modified base map of mine, I can do that by loading up that map that I've saved there. And now I think, I think we can attempt a fire up. Right, no matter how hard I try, this plugging a laptop into a car to tune it is something that is completely alien to me. But I've done my best there. I've checked the sensors. Everything looks okay. I think it's time we attempted a startup. Let's do it. Ignition off. Ignition back on. Kick it in the guts, Barry. Oh. It's running. That is a start. It's idling a little low. Oh, oh. Died. Let's try that again. Okay, it's idling. I've got a lot of lights flashing at me on the dash for some reason. I need to look into that. Let's have a look here. Oh, wow. Well, that's not good. Oh, that's not good at all. Hmm, I'm going to shut it off. Houston, I think we've got a problem. Right, that was about the time that things went pear-shaped and I don't even know where to start here. But long story short, I had to spend the rest of that afternoon and some of the evening as well uh, basically undoing everything that I'd done in these previous episodes to get the car back to stock so I could drive it to work the next day. It was an absolute nightmare and that also included wiring back in the stock O2 narrowband sensor because the AEM X series does not have narrowband emulation so there was no way for that to communicate with the stock ECU. It was an absolute headache and it's actually a couple of weeks on now because it's taken me that long to calm down and also work up the motivation to finish this video. So I'm sure you want to know what went wrong. Let me show you. Right, I'm going to show you a log of one of the first startups and I'm going to put it up on screen so you can see what I'm looking at. And I want you to pay close attention to the battery voltage column. So here we are at rest. The car's not running. We're seeing 12.7 volts. Uh, if I scroll down this column somewhere there it's going to drop to about eight or nine volts now that's me cranking the car so from then on the car's running and the alternator is charging so we start to see 14 volts that's about right but look what happens as i scroll further down this column we start to see 15 volts 16 volts 17 volts and somewhere further down here it just tips over 18 volts as well which is way way too high for a car. So as soon as I noticed this, like you saw in the video, I immediately shut the car off and began to troubleshoot the issue. And 
After a long process of speaking to both Motorsport Electronics and a remote tuner called Alex Hickson, thanks to both of these, uh, I would have been totally stuck without their help, both came to the same conclusion, which was the ME221 was at fault, or specifically uh, the output for the alternator control was faulty. And clearly it wasn't doing its job because there was no way I should have been seeing 18 volts. And that was at just around idle as well. If I'd have revved the car hard, who knows what we could have got to, 20? 25 volts plus, I don't know, but it could have been catastrophic for some of the electrical components in this car. So that's why I had to put everything back to stock. So what am I gonna do about it? Well, I see three options going forward. Option number one is contact the seller and send it back and get a refund. But conveniently, this guy is now ignoring my messages. So that at the moment is looking unlikely. Option number two is to send the ECU back to Motorsport Electronics for diagnosis and repairs, but they've already quoted me 70 pounds just to have a look at the thing, and then there's gonna be parts and labor on top of that, which stings because I'm sure by the time that's fixed, it would have been cheaper to just buy a brand new ECU. So I'm not a fan of that option, which brings me to option number three, which is probably my favorite and it's the most cowboy approach, but it is to retrofit a Mark I alternator into this car. Now, the key thing with the Mark Ones is that those alternators were self-regulating. So the theory is by fitting that to my car, I could sort of bypass this ECU issue. Now, it is by no means fixing the problem. I know that it's kind of just sweeping it under the carpet, but I'm out of options here, and if I can find one of these Mark I alternators for sub 50, 40 pounds, hopefully, you know, I think it's definitely worth a shot. So that is what I've got coming up. That's my plan. I'm really sorry to close this episode out this way. No one's more peed off than me. I really hoped to be running around driving with the ME221 in the car, but it just wasn't meant to be. I'll get this build back on track one way or another. And don't forget this build is working towards supercharging this MX-5. And I'm gonna be documenting the entire series right here on this channel with a comprehensive list of expenses as well, which is starting to stack up. And unfortunately the girlfriend can see it as well. So that's always a complication, but I'm doing it. There we go. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with any future videos. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one where I hopefully will have some better news.